This is it. First video of the year. Facebook has your birth certificate. Race riots. Extreme racial tension and unrest. Uh, it's called the knockout game, and eventually white people are gonna get tired of playing it. That's all I'm saying. We actually have made it to the 2020s now, so any movie that takes place in 2020 or beyond that shows off future shit we don't have is officially a liar. But instead of looking towards the future, I'm gonna take you bitches on a journey into the past through anime. So yeah, Vinland Saga is really fucking good. Okay, to add more detail, Vinland Saga is a great anime adaptation. For those that don't know, Vinland Saga is a manga created by Makoto Yukimura. And the best way to describe it is to take Berserk, then rip out all the fantasy elements, lower the levels of violence to be more grounded and realistic, putting that in air quotes, and then change the setting to Nordic Vikings. There, that's basically the rundown. Now there's a lot missing from that summary, but that's because Vinland Saga is best entered into blind. The most I can say is that it starts off as a revenge story. It starts off that way. But now is not the time to beat around the bush. I'm going to get into more detail with the story, so if you want a completely blind experience, then now is the time to stop the video and check out the show. Highly recommended. It's super good. Okay, from this point on, I'm divulging plot and character information. You have been warned. You have been warned. So, Vinland Saga follows the protagonist Thorfinn, a child soldier that fights for a mercenary band led by a man named Askeladd. But the reason Thorfinn hangs around is a tad eccentric. As it turns out, Askeladd murdered Thorfinn's father, Thors. This isn't a spoiler, it's literally in the plot description of the manga. Don't be an idiot who thinks Thors is the actual protagonist. Don't be an anime only. <laughs> But he demands that Askeladd duels him so he can kill him honorably. Askeladd, not being a fucking idiot, constantly wins these duels and exploits Thorfinn's bloodlust to his advantage. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds like a really interesting plot but could easily become boring if it's the same shit over and over again. Well it's not. Very quickly the story shows that a lot more is under the hood than you would think. Soon the gang is dragged into the war between England and Denmark where some crazy shit goes down, and the main plot happens. With the show, at least. The manga goes on after that arc, but that involves divulging massive spoilers, and doesn't really matter since the show doesn't cover that. But what I love most about this show, the manga too, but this video is specifically about the adaptation, is that the focus is clearly on the characters. A lot of the time when you get a historical action anime, or historical shows in general really, it tends to only really focus on just the plot. Characters usually are very archetypal or just kind of bare bones, and can feel flat because the focus is on the events happening around them, less so much on how the people affected them. Well, Vinland Saga has the advantage of being a very fictionalized account of actual wars, so it doesn't have to worry about hitting specific beats at certain times in specific ways. There's plenty of of time to flesh out characters and make you care about what's going on. Hell, I nearly flunked history in high school, but I'm 95% sure Leif Erikson never spent a decade trying to track down an edgy anime boy that yells a lot. So the show is accurate, but it's not realistic. Details such as the life of peasants in England are explored, but you also have a giant nigga uppercutting horses into the air. Rule of Cool wins out 90% of the time, but it's really cool, so it's okay. And as stated, the characters are what matters most of the time, which helps sell you on the crazier violence that happens. Who cares that's not 100% to the T realism. It's cool to watch the big boy hit the bad man with the axe and his head splits open. Now, Thorfinn starts off as a pretty unlikable protagonist, sort of similar to Eren Yeager, though 10,000 times more competent and didn't need literal plot magic to save his ass. I brought up Eren because the same studio that animated Attack on Titan and made this, so it was kind of inevitable really. But Thorfinn is angry, bitter, and traumatized by the death of his father. And what makes him interesting is that the show knows he's an edgy dumbass. In fact, multiple times he gets called out for being a rabid retard that doesn't think about shit. And that's something I always enjoy, especially since Thorfinn is by no means a hero. He does some pretty terrible things, and just kind of sits by as pretty terrible things are done to people. His arc is him realizing he learned literally nothing from his father. And once again, that's a trope I tend to enjoy, where the main character teaches through being a bad example. 
example. But now I have to disclose who the real protagonist of the anime is, Askeladd. Not even joking, this dude bleeds charisma, and it's really hard not to love him. <laughs> Even when he is doing things that are objectively evil, and for very evil reasons, you root for him. Mainly because nobody in the story is really that heroic. Except Thors. Oh yeah, spoilers, Thors dies. Yeah, there were retards that actually thought Thors was the protagonist of the story and got pissed off when he died. That was a thing. And in all honesty, Askeladd's actually more of a protagonist than Thorfinn, really. As the plot goes on and the stakes are raised into political intrigue, Thorfinn kinda takes a backseat to Askeladd. Multiple episodes can go on where Thorfinn barely does anything or even says a word because the focus is on Askeladd planning and strategizing. I'm not complaining. Askeladd is so good at being the protagonist that he just steals the role away from Thorfinn, but it does happen. Some people say he's the best villain in anime, but nah, he ain't no Griffith or Hisoka. Still hype as fuck though. Of course, there are definitely more characters than just these two, and they're all interesting in their own ways. But there is no contest. The best side character by far is Thorkel, the ultimate unit himself. This guy is just barrels of fun. Thorkel's arc is that he really doesn't have one. He knows who he is from the beginning. He is a warmongering lunatic and he loves every bit of it. Guy is perfectly balanced between being hilarious and genuinely terrifying. <laughs> There are other characters, but I don't want to talk too much because it would involve giving away plot information once again, but they're all very fleshed out, they feel very human, and all are natural to this setting. So the cast is fun, they feel very real. Now what about the most important part of any anime, the animation? Well, all I can really say is that the animation can be downright beautiful. There is a lot of color and detail, bringing the environments to life. Autumn in Dark Ages England looks incredible. Now is it top tier nothing can beat it levels? Nah, nah, not, not really. It looks nice, but moments that CGI gets used sticks out like a sore thumb, and it doesn't look good. Luckily it's not very often, and mainly used for stuff like leaves falling in the air or boats on the water, but there are points where crowds of soldiers get animated using CG and it looks... Oh god, it looks terrible. As stated, it's not all the time, but when it happens, it's all you can see. Luckily, it's not as bad as Goblin Slayer, where the main character of your anime is a CGI golem 70% of the time. Or... that anime. Oh god, make it stop, 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 get out of my head! Now the action for the show is fun as all hell. It's bloody, violent, kinetic, and you feel the impact of everything that happens. Battle scenes are always energetic, and there are tons of jobbers that get killed off, which is great for an action series. You need people to feel the weight in order for the violence to be satisfying. But what I love most about this show is honestly, the silence. Anime, in my opinion, has a problem with over-explaining shit that you can clearly see on the screen. Most of it is a holdover from when shonen shows had to repeat animations, or just outright pad out the runtime because the budget couldn't cover everything. Also, the most profitable animes are shonen, which tend to over-explain since they go for crazy over-the-top shit that kinda needs to be explained. Not to mention action scenes and mangas can be convoluted to follow as a book, so the author feels the need to lay out exactly what happened to make sure you're following. The point is, everyone decides to try and take a slice of this pie for whatever reason, and now it's just a thing that anime does. I still like anime, but seeing a show that's willing to just show you things and let you digest what you see is always nice. Perfect Blue does that too, and I fucking love that movie. Cowboy Bebop is also famous for just letting you enjoy a show without beating you over the head with exposition. So the characters are great, the action is badass, and the animation is beautiful. Are there any flaws in this show? A few. 
For one, when I say that Thorfinn is an edgy anime boy, I really mean that he is an edgy anime boy. If Japanese people screaming about their dead dad is hilarious to you, then you'll be red in the face when this guy is on screen. Thorfinn has a great voice actor, I'm not gonna discredit him there. Both the adult him and child version of him, which is covered in flashback shit, they both do their job really well. But it can really feel like they're milking the vocal cords since he screams a lot. And it can feel really silly if you're not already 100% bored with everything. Dude's over the top as hell. Also, the ending. Now the ending is good, and if you read the manga you sort of already can guess when the 24 episode show will end. But when it gets there, it just sort of stops. Clearly, it's a teaser for a season 2, or just a blatant read the manga dumbass thing if season 2 never happens. But it can feel like right as shit has reached a top peak, it cuts out. It's not bad, as I said, but if you don't already know what happens after the fact, then it can kind of make you go, what the fuck, when the credits roll. Still, it's an excellent anime. You can watch it on Amazon Prime, which is how I did, or you can go to an anime pirate site and watch it there if you don't have the money, which I'm assuming most people will since it's free and easy. But that's all I can say about Vinland Saga. It's a great show and I highly recommend it for people that actually don't watch much anime. I'm gonna be the next Hokage. <laughs> It feels like a western show, even when the Japanese voice acting and the anime tropes pop up. The characters are well written, the action is glorious, and the animation is beautiful. Not even mentioning the music, which is great all around. It feels bombastic and epic, which fits the crazy battles perfectly. So I hope you guys check out this show and love it as much as I do. It was a great anime to close out 2019, and it's a great one to start 2020 with. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. <laughs> What's going on, big guy?